This is an RPM meter made with Arduino. The case is designed and 3D printed and the sensor is a combination between an infrared LED and an infrared sensible transistor. To print the measured value I've used an OLED screen module like this one. And to keep it simple I've used a 9 volts battery that you could easily change when it's low. The circuit is more than easy and needs very few components, so let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. The basics of this RPM meter stands on detecting or not infrared light. Using an infrared LED we emit light. The reason that we are using infrared light instead of normal visible light is that we are already surrounded by visible light so it will be impossible to make the difference between light or no light at all. Using infrared wave we could obtain better results and longer distances with less noise. The second component is an infrared sensible transistor that works exactly like a common BJT transistor but instead of controlling the current from the collector to the emitter by applying a small current to the base we control the current applying infrared light. The base of this transistor is exposed to the light and when the infrared wave touches the base the circuit is open and no current will flow to the transistor. But when no light is exposed current could flow. So basically this is a switch activated by light. So the detection circuit is something like this. The output will be the emitter of the transistor. We add a pull down resistor to the output. In this way, when the circuit is open, the output will be ground. And when the circuit is closed, the output will be a high value, in this case 5 volts because that's the basic voltage of the Arduino. Actually, the output is a voltage divider between the resistance of the transistor and the pull down resistor. So the pull down should have a high value, in this case 4.7 kilo ohms. So when the transistor is conducting, the voltage drop between the collector and the emitter should be very small and all the voltage should drop on the pull down resistor. Next, we should add a small resistor around 100 ohms to the positive pin of the infrared LED in order to limit the current and not burn it. I put the prototype sensor in front of a spinning disc with a white stripe on it. As you can see, on my oscilloscope, I've got a low voltage whenever there is no light reflecting into the sensor, representing the black material. In order to improve this wave full of noise, we should use an operational amplifier. I've used the LM324 op amp. Connect 5 volts to the input pin of the amplifier. Also share ground. Connect the output from the sensor to the positive input of the op amp and the negative input to a voltage divider made with a potentiometer. In this way, we could regulate the sensing distance of the sensor depending on the intensity of the light. The operational amplifier in this case will act like a comparator. When the voltage on the positive input is higher than the one of the negative input, we have a positive pulse on the amplifier output. This will improve the created square wave, as we can see here. That's it, the sensor is ready. Now let's test it. Using this black and white paper I check the functionality. The black color should absorb the light, so no light will reflect into the transistor base, so the circuit is still open. When white color is placed in front of the LED, the light reflects and hits the transistor base, closing the circuit. So imagine a white stripe on the exterior of the motor shaft. Each time that the stripe passes in front of the sensor, we will have 0 volts at the output and 5 volts in the rest of the time. Now we should connect the output to the Arduino and measure the time between each pulse that the sensor creates. Before that I place the sensor in front of a spinning disc and adjust the potentiometer to have around 10 cm of working distance. Now I connect the amplifier output to the Arduino and add this I2C OLED screen. Next I upload a small test code that should print the RPM value to the screen module. 
The circuit works. Now let's build the RPM meter. Of course, we will need a switch to turn it on and off, a 9V battery, the sensor circuit with the LM324 amplifier, an Arduino Nano or Pro Mini, the OLED screen, a small drilled PCB, a push button and a 10K small potentiometer like this one. You could find a full part list in the link below as always. To make the connections you should use this schematic that you could also download from a link below. So I've designed my case in Blender, making it look better each time. I've 3D printed using PLA material, 3 perimeters and 20% infill and a nozzle of 0.3mm. I've created the G-code, saved it to an SD card and used my Tron XY X5 3D printer to print the case. Ok, so I first solder a black and a red wire to the positive and negative pins of the LED and insulate the soldered connections. Next, I glue in place the LED and the infrared transistor on the tip of the case. I will also add this small lens in front of the LED to improve the light dot. I want the light to be centered in a smaller area so I could fit it inside of the white strip. This lens is from a ultra cheap laser module like this one that doesn't work anymore. We can't see infrared light, but I could show you an example using this red LED. This is the light pattern with no lens. You can see that it covers both white and black parts of the spinning disc. Now I add the lens. As you can see the light is more powerful in the center and a bigger part of it touches the white strip. But now we have to make sure that the reflected wave will end exactly on the transistor base inside of the case hole. Ok so first I solder the positive wire from the 9V battery to the main switch and the switch to the input of the Arduino. I solder ground directly to the ground pin. In this way, the system will turn on when the switch is pressed. I connect the OLED screen clock and data pins to the A4 and A5 pins of the Arduino. Those are the I2C port pins if you're using Arduino Nano or Uno. I solder the sensor circuit on a small drilled PCB following the circuit schematic, but I solder the distance set potentiometer using wires, not on the PCB. I want to place this potentiometer on the exterior of the plastic case. Remember to connect ground and supply 5V to the amplifier and the sensing circuit as well. I solder the amplifier output to digital pin 13 of the Arduino and connect also 5V and ground to it. Finally, I solder the push button with the pull down resistor and connect the output of the button to digital pin 9. I will use this push button to indicate to the sensor when to measure and leave the Arduino into low power mode while not measuring. I glue the main switch using hot glue on the exterior of the case. Now once again using a small amount of hot glue I place the OLED screen and make sure that it's not moving. I screw in place the push button and also add a little bit of hot glue. I also glue the potentiometer to the interior of the case like this. Connect the battery and that's it, the case is ready. It's now time to program the Arduino so let's look a little bit at the code. This is the use code that you could download from a link in the description of this video. You should download the OLED libraries from the description as well. Those libraries are the Adafruit SSD1306 and the Adafruit GFX library. We import the needed libraries and define the variables for the OLED screen. We define the sensor and the push button inputs and set those as inputs. Also, in the setup loop, we start the I2C communication with the screen using the I2C address. If you don't know the I2C address of your module, use the I2C scanner code below. 
connect your module to the A4 and A5 pins which are data and clock. Upload the code and open the serial monitor at the baud rate of 9600. Here is the device I2C address. So place it in your code. In the void loop, if the push button is pressed, we measure the time between each pulse that the sensor gives us. The procedure goes like this. When we detect a high pulse or a positive edge, we start counting using the micro function. When we detect the negative edge, we keep counting. Finally, when we detect the second positive edge, we stop counting and make the difference between the first measurement and the actual measurement. And that will give us the time between pulses, which is the time in microseconds for one rotation. If we know the time for one rotation, we could obtain the total rotation in one full minute by dividing one minute by the length of the measure pulse. That's it. Now we print the value on the OLED screen and that's all. If the push button is not pressed, we put the Arduino into low power mode. Upload the code to the Arduino and close the case using M3 screws and nuts. Now let's give it a test. I stick a white stripe of duct tape on the spinning disc connected to this motor. This it's not a normal motor, it's a step motor, so I could easily control the speed. I know that this motor does 200 steps for each rotation, so at a frequency of 2 kHz it should spin at 10 revolutions per second, or 600 revolutions per minute. I place the sensor in front of it. As you can see, the result is quite precise. I test the meter with higher speeds as well, using a normal DC motor. The RPM meter is a success. It could measure more than 10,000 revolutions per minute. Remember to turn the device off when you are not using it. That's it. Please, always check the description below for all the schematics, codes and component list. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share the video with your friends. If you have any question, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. If you consider helping my project, check my new Patreon page and help my workshop grow and have all other more cool tutorials. Thanks again and see you later guys.